Collective agreements for Ontario teachers expired at the start of the school year. Bargaining between the unions representing those teachers and the government is ongoing, but to date without any signs of a breakthrough. That's prompted ETFO, the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario, to give notice that its members will begin a work to rule job action on Tuesday. With us now for more on where things stand, we welcome Sam Hammond. He is the president of the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario. Nice to have you back in that chair. Yeah, you know, thank It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, as we suggest, Tuesday's a big day for you guys. What are you going to be doing? It is. Well, on, on Tuesday, after months of trying to negotiate a deal, uh, we'll be implementing uh, phase one, as we call it, work to rule, where our members will be uh, removing uh, administrative duties associated with Ministry of Education activities and, and school boards. And we're doing that after a historic 98% uh, strike vote from our members across this province, both for our teachers, occasional teachers, and our early childhood educators and educational uh, professionals. That work to rule, what does that actually look like on the ground, the administrative stuff you just referred to? Yeah, so it is administrative, and we've been very careful not to uh, negatively affect or interfere with the uh, learning environment in classrooms or student learning. Uh, our members, for example, will not be taking part in any activities related to EQAO. They'll not be taking part in, in any of the prep work for the, uh, the math proficiency test. Uh, for faculty of ed students. They won't be attending uh, professional development outside of the school day, uh, except in Hamilton, where there is a professional development day dedicated to bullying uh, that we have said our members need to be there because it's an important uh, key issue that they should be a part of. So they will do that one. Absolutely. So as to coaching after school, as to, you know, <clears throat> being the, uh, the producer of a play at school or a musical or something like that, that is not affected as of yet. Yeah, that will continue. Okay. What impact do you think these measures you just mentioned, the EQAO, the math, the PD days, what impact on the students do you think that will have? None, absolutely none. We've been very careful to stay away from uh, uh, affecting student learning uh, conditions or their environment. And I'll be honest, one of the reasons we've done that is, oh, two reasons, for students but also because we've had support, uh, you know, um, historic support, quite frankly, uh, from parents in this province. And we're listening to what they're saying and trying to work with them to get through this uh, difficult period. What about report cards? Any change in the kind of comments teachers will leave on report cards? Yeah, uh, so our, our members will uh, just put in uh, their marks, kindergarten report cards, for example, instead of two paragraphs, they'll just be putting in one key statement for each of those but that will not affect students. That's just reporting to parents. Uh, and there's a lot of communication that goes on outside of report cards day in and day out uh, with our mem between our members and, and parents. It doesn't affect the students, but it does affect a parent's understanding or the depth of understanding of how well or badly their child is doing, does it not? Well, what might be written down traditionally, yes, or in, you know, in uh, other report cards, but the, the ongoing communication uh, between our members and parents will continue. So all of those gaps will be filled by that communication uh, on a daily basis, quite frankly. Okay. The Education Minister, Stephen Lecce, has said that he believes the differences between his Ministry of Education and your teacher union and the secondary teachers and the Catholic teachers, he says the issues are limited. Is he right about that? Uh, no. Uh, we are quite far apart uh, at the table, uh, all four. Uh, for the first time I can remember, uh, all four teacher affiliates and their members are saying the same thing. Who did I forget that? that? There's elementary, secondary, Catholic, and... Francophone. French. AFL. Okay. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, Not you sorry. Me sorry. I forgot. Yeah. Okay. We're all on the same, we're all on, this, on the same page in saying that we are so far apart on numerous issues, just not one, as the minister has... Uh, suggested, but a, n a number of key issues uh, that are on the table. Give me one. Uh, one issue is funding for uh, additional funding for students with special needs or unique learning um, uh, challenges. Uh, we had, for example, in our extension agreement, a total of $90 million for two funds that increased the number of special education teachers. Uh, and supports for at-risk students and Indigenous supports and English language learners. This government refused to renew that uh, in, in this uh, contract. 
Uh, and we are adamant that that needs to be a part moving forward for those students who need those supports. $90 million doesn't sound like a lot of money that should prevent two sides from coming to an agreement in a $30 billion ministry. So clearly there's more going on here than that, right? Yeah, ab absolutely. Okay, so what else? Well, it, it, can I just say that, you know, $90, $90 million, and you look at recently what's come out that they have spent $230, $31 million uh, to scrap green energy projects across this province, or they've paid hundred and I know hundred million dollars to break hydro contracts, and we're struggling and fighting at the table to get ninety million dollars a commitment to that on an ongoing basis for students. Well, I mean, in fairness, you also are offended by the fact that they passed a law saying that all contract negotiations with public sector unions have to be capped at one percent maximum. You don't like that either, right? No. Absolutely not. It, it tramples our collective bargaining rights that are protected under the Charter. Frankly, we went through this with uh, the previous government and Bill 115, and we, we launched a court challenge to that, and we're successful, and uh, all, of, you know, all of the violations mm -hmm. of that Charter were confirmed, and, and here we go again. And it is offensive when the rate of inflation is running about 2%, uh, and our members are already behind when it comes to salary, and they're saying we're going to cap it at 1% 1, 1 across the board. Uh, I guess just to remind people, that was during the Dalton McGuinty years when Bill 115 was later found to be unconstitutional, but in the meantime, it went through, it had its impact, and by the time the courts ruled it was unconstitutional, uh, you know, he was out and it was well down the road. Yes. So they could do the same thing here, which is by the time you find out that this might be unconstitutional, the impact will already have been felt. Yeah. So not much you can do about that, is there? Well, we'll file a court challenge, mm -hmm. uh, but you're right. Uh, you know, Dalton McGinty, his government is gone. Uh, our members are still here, still here in classrooms across the province paying the price for that. Now, I don't want to, <clears throat> I don't want to get too stuck in the mud in the details on this. However, the Toronto Sun was reporting, I know you don't love the Sun, but, but you know, sometimes, uh -huh. the, the, oh. sometimes they're right. Um, they reported that a source in the Ministry of Education said that the average annual salary, because I know when you get asked what's the average teacher salary, you know, you say it's complicated <clears throat> and there's grids and et cetera, et cetera. But the average salary of an elementary teacher in the province is just over $89,000 a year, not including benefits. Does that sound about right to you? Uh, 86,000 is about the average. 86 is about yep. the average. Okay. So, but that, but that's just for our teacher members. Mm -hmm. That doesn't include our early childhood educators who are paid much less um, mid thirties. Yeah. Much uh, less. Our occasional teachers who are living below the poverty line in most cases. So it, there, there are different aspects of this in terms of salary. I, 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 I take your point, but it, it, this is all about the battle for public opinion at a certain point. And if you're trying to get the public on your side, are you concerned that trying to go to bat for more than 1% salary increases for some of your members who are already making close to $90,000 a year on average, and surely some are making six figures, when that's $15,000 above the province's median family income, <clears throat> how problematic is that? Well, everyone in Ontario has to deal with the rate of inflation, cost of living year in and year out. Our members are included in that. Uh, and make no apologies for uh, suggesting, asking for uh, a, a cost of living rate of inflation increase for our members, particularly when this government is giving parliamentary assistance and uh, min deputy ministers a 14% salary increase and doing it retro retroactive to the day they were elected. So uh, when let's, you pointed that let's, out to them, let's what did they be say? reasonable. Yeah, when you pointed that out to them, what did they say about that? They don't talk to me. They don't talk to you? They don't talk to me. Well, the, the minister may not talk to you, but surely his officials talk to you. Well, uh, they're representatives at the bargaining table, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, we've had no response to that at the bargaining table. I see. Okay. Uh, you've pointed out you are going to challenge this in court, right? The 1% increase? Yes, absolutely. That is, that is guaranteed absolutely. going ahead forward. What, um, you know, I do remember when the Liberals were in power, they insisted on, quote, unquote, net zero salary increases, which meant that if you wanted to pay your members 1% or 2% more, you know, you're going to have to give up something so that at the end of the day it all worked out to a 0% additional cost. If you look at it that way, can you say the Conservatives are actually being a little more generous? Because at least they're offering you one. Uh, no, I, I would not agree that they're being more generous. Um, well, one's more generous than zero, isn't well, it? I, well, you know, I, I think what we need to do is go back, Steve, to uh, what the Premier has been saying, was saying for months and months and months on end. 
We have to hold we have to hold spending because we have a fifteen billion dollar deficit. Mm -hmm. and then it's an eleven billion dollar deficit, and then we find out it's a seven point four billion dollar deficit. Mm -hmm. So rather than having those arguments about uh, cutting costs, let's have let's first determine what the deficit is mm -hmm. and work together. And we've said from the beginning that uh, a lot of this, uh, the costing for education revolves around the funding formula. For over a decade, we've been saying, let's have an independent forensic audit of that uh, and see where, if there are savings within that funding formula, but what needs to be funded uh, in a more adequate way on a go-forward basis. You've asked for that, and what's been the response to that? Uh, the previous government and this government is certainly not paying attention to it. Hmm. But they should, because, uh, the, you know, if we go back to Mike Harris, taking uh, in today's dollars about $2 billion uh, out of education, particularly around the funding for special education, <clears throat> even before uh, uh, we start with this government, the system is already in need of desperate supports and additional supports, and now they're cutting and just adding to that. Earlier this week, the Minister of Education, he's had several press conferences this week, and uh, we want to show you a little bite from one of the ones he had. Okay, Sheldon, shall we roll this clip, please? Here's Stephen Lecce. The one thing that unites the New Democrats of Bob Ray, the PCs of Mike Harris, Ernie Eves, the Liberals of Kathleen Wynne, Dalton McGinty, and now, full circle, Doug Ford, is the one commonality. It's not our party or our values. It's that in each and every example, uh, unions have escalated. And I think parents are fed up. Is he right that, that regardless of what stripe is in office at Queen's Park, you guys tend to have a problem with whoever's there. Well, it's, it's not a problem with a government or governments uh, going back to the late 90s uh, with Mike Harris or even earlier uh, with Bob Ray. And I've said, you know, if you look at Bob Ray and uh, um, his social contract and attack on public sector workers in this province, unions and their members. And collective bargaining. And, and collective bargaining, absolutely. Then if you look at Mike Harris, $2 billion uh, out of education, move forward to uh, Dalton McGuinty and the Liberals and Bill 115, and now the, conserv the Conservative Party under Doug Ford in terms of what they're doing and the massive cuts that they're making, not just to education, but to health care and autism funding, et cetera. In every one of those cases, we've not hesitated to stand up to defend publicly funded public education or students in this province or along with our allies, public health care. Again, I take your point, but of course that's not the only thing you're standing up for. Yes, you're standing up for public education, but you're standing up for your members. And yes, absolutely. I mean, that, that's your absolutely. job. Your job is to get them paid as much as possible, yeah. to get their benefits as big as possible. You're not going to deny that. I mean, right? That's part of your agenda here as well. It absolutely is, and I make no apology for that. But at the same time, our priorities, that, that's first and foremost for me, but at the same time, um, uh, what we're doing is defending, quite frankly, publicly funded education in the province and students in this province. The minister would say, were he here, he would say, we, we blew it on autism, but we've got a new minister in place and a new policy in place and put hundreds of millions of dollars more into it. He would say, we started out with an average class size across the, size across the boards at 28. We brought it down to 25 because we listened. He would say, we wanted four courses online, and we've brought it down to two now because we've gone out, consulted, and listened. He would say that they have compromised on three really big issues that are of interest to you and your members, and it's time for you to compromise. What's wrong with that? Well, um, our members, um, teachers, occasional teachers, early childhood educators, educational support, professional support personnel, have already um, help this government in not the uh, success of government in a number of different ways. Dalton McGinty, take a pause. Um, we have we have worked with them and we have paid a price uh, in, in many cases, uh, our members across this province. And now we're be, now they're being asked to do it again. And at the same time they're asking us to do it again, they're giving you know over a billion dollars in corporate tax cuts. They're prepared to, to break a contract with, with beer stores that could cost up to a billion dollars. Um, they're prepared to uh, continue to fight the carbon tax with $3 billion in revenue not coming in and putting aside another $30 million to fight that challenge. So uh, we have done our part. 
Uh, quite frankly, we are at the table. We are trying to do whatever we can to get a, uh, an agreement that is fair and reasonable. Uh, and that's where that should happen. Okay, let's remind everybody in our remaining moments here, your members voted 98% uh, to authorize you to call a strike if the contract talks completely break down. Uh, you've mentioned on this program here, you're about to go to phase one on Tuesday. Phase one, you say, will not hurt the kids, uh, but it will, it, it, your members will decline to do services that they otherwise would have done. I guess people want to know, how close do you think this thing is to an actual full-blown strike? Uh, I, I, I don't have an answer for that, Steve. Uh, sincerely, we're trying to get a deal at that table. We're bargaining today, actually. I'm taking a break so that, uh, uh, that I can be here. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. And I have said time and time again, it is dependent on this government coming back to the table and being serious. Let me give you one example. Full day kindergarten or kindergarten in this province with uh, a teacher and an early childhood educator in that program. First thing we put on the table, late August, provide us with a commitment to that uh, world-class program in this province. We're still waiting. Mm. The minister has said in the estimates committee and, and on Metro Morning that he's, uh, it, it's a great program, that the model is working, that there will be no changes to it then just come to the table and make that commitment at the table rather than in the media. Uh, and we could get to a deal. And I hope that that's sooner rather than later. Do you see the other side as having compromised on anything of significance to you? No. Nothing? No. At this point, no. So the online stuff is not impressive to you? Well, the online stuff affects secondary. And the class size also. Uh, and and the, well, class size affects us as well as uh, our colleagues in secondary. Um, they're looking at now uh, um, a, a loss of about 6,000 teachers. Ours is about a, about a, about 1,000. How You mentioned earlier that all four teacher unions are sort of in the same position with the government at the moment. How much discussion is there among the heads of the unions just to find out, well, I wonder how the secondary teachers are doing on that, and I wonder how the francophone teachers are doing on that, and if they're getting this, then we want to... How much consultation is there among you guys? Almost on a daily basis. Uh, we have those conversations, um, uh, you know, where we can share stuff that, that, that we don't think is confidential at the table, but we have those conversations uh, on a regular basis. Is that and, just... and you talk about, uh, you know, for a teacher affiliate, first time in history, at the same time, hmm. we've all taken strike votes, uh, three of them anyway, sorry, 95, 97, 98 percent, and our francophone colleagues are headed down that road uh, middle of December. Well, you've got big mandates. There's no doubt about that. And, and I guess we should put on the record, you folks have been in a, you know, in a legal strike position, I guess, since the beginning of September, right? You've, yeah. Had a, yeah. you've had no contract. You're working without a contract right now. Yeah, we don't have a contract, but we've only been in a legal strike position for the last 17 days because of the process. Oh, right. Okay, okay. How, how ticked off do you think teachers across the province are right now with the fact that here you are, September, October, November, you're almost three full months into the school year and still working without an agreement? Uh, they are extremely frustrated. They continue to do what, they, the, what they, they do as professionals day in and day out in classrooms and, and work sites. But I travel around this province to our strike vote meetings, 1,000, 2,000, 6,000 members there. Uh, and it was very clear from all of those meetings and the results of those strike vote meetings uh, that they are extremely frustrated and they're taking a stand, uh, quite frankly, uh, for issues that are important to them. They're on the front lines. They feel this much more than I do as, as a union president day in and day out. The lack of supports, the lack of educational assistance, etc. Uh, and, 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 and they want to see something uh, done about that, as do we. I'm going to ask a question that's going to get every teacher mad at me, but I know parents are thinking it, so I'm going to ask it. How can we be sure that that anger and frustration that teachers are feeling is not being meted out on their students in the class? Uh, because they're professionals. They are absolutely, they are professionals across the board, whether it's teachers, our occasional teachers, our early childhood educators, our educational professionals. They go to work every day to do what they do well, they're the heart and soul of publicly funded education, uh, and they're not bringing this into the classroom, quite frankly. Okay, one last question, Sam, and that is, you mentioned phase one, work to rule, starts Tuesday. Somewhere down the road, you may be on strike, maybe. Is there phase two of work to rule still to come? 
So we plan ahead. Uh, but we haven't in detail said, you know, uh, here's what uh, phase two would look like. Here's the date we're going to start it. Here's how, how long it would last um, because we're focused, quite frankly, we're focused this week and next week and thereafter on, on getting a deal. But, but certainly, uh, if we can't reach a deal, and we hope we can, then we'll have to start looking at uh, where this goes down the road. The government can stop this. The government needs to work with us and focus at the table to get a deal. That's Sam Hammond. He's the president of the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario, and we're grateful that you took some time away from the bargaining sessions to come inform our viewers and listeners here on TVO tonight. Thanks so Absolute much. Absolute pleasure. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.